I'm I'm tired. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired of being disappointed in Texas. I'm 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 at that point where I'm just like, you know what? If you guys want to annex yourselves, just fucking do it. But at the same time, I recognize that that would just screw over like everybody living in Texas. So maybe let's not do that. Before we get disappointed in Texas more so than anything else, let's go ahead and look at the fan art section. Because uh, honestly, we have a couple of really cool pieces today. So the first one we have here uh, is from uh, Zuck MLH. I'm recording this right after the last one that I, I did, and I, I still do not know how to pronounce their name. Um, it says, War Words isn't real. It can't hurt you. I feel as though I've been in enough therapy sessions to know that those words are real and they can hurt me, and it's why I've got an entire merch line about the OWO war. That said, we do have the next piece, and this is... Jesus, this is hand da hands down, like, one of my favorite pieces. This is so adorable. This is from Taylor Allen, and they give, uh, I said, a fall long hair cirrus. I'm gonna be honest... I want this as a design. I, I want this as as an outfit. I am I am sending this outfit to Remixon, and I'm I'm literally just going to go. How much do I have to pay you? How much do I have to pay you to get this? Because this is fucking cute. I love this outfit. So I I'm getting it. That's what that's exactly what's happening. So, as always, thank you all for your fan art submissions, and especially for the one that is that is being sent to my artist so that it can become a live 2D model. As always, everyone, thank you very much. And if you want your fan art shown on a future video, the best way to do so is by dropping it into the comments, or not comment section, the fan art section on the Discord. That way, you know that your fan art will eventually be shown. And now that I have just sent that to Remixon without me forgetting, let's go ahead and get into the myriads of reasons in which or why we should just uh, be very sad that Texas exists. Texas lawmakers pass a rewrite of the state's bail system aimed at keeping more people behind bars who can't post cash. <sighs> this hurts. As somebody who has been in jail and had to pay thousands to bail out, like, uh, granted, it was for a car insurance thing, like, years ago, like, almost, yeah, like, five years ago now. Um, so it's far enough away. It happened ages ago. But still, the fact that I have gone through this shit right now makes this a personal issue for me. So if I get mad during this episode at all, if my smile dips or anything, just, you know... Bear with me. I'm sorry. But the House balked at a part of the Senate's bill that would have barred charitable groups from posting bail for some defendants, but otherwise embraced new limits on letting people accused of violent crimes out of jail. Okay, so. So, what is this for? What is this for? Barred charitable groups from posting bail for some defendants. Can anybody guess what this is? Can anybody guess what this is for? Who this is aimed at? Just just take a random ass guess. Because I can tell you exactly what this is for. I can tell you exactly why this was put in. What was one of the number one charities that was donated to repeatedly during the height of the BLM protests? Bail fund charities. Bail fund charities. BLM bail funds. Thank you very much, Freya. Thank you very much, Raziel Faustus. Y'all are getting it right. BLM bail funds. And yet, here we are. We are in the darkest timeline. They are now trying to make it to where charitable groups cannot post bail for you. Now the workaround here would be uh, getting all the money for the charity and then, you know, posting it individually and then lying about your relation to the individual people who are being bailed out. But point is, 
this is, I, I am almost 100% certain, this was written with the express intention of saying fuck you to places uh, that are trying to bail out uh, protesters. That's my thought. That is the cynical side of my brain that has been around the world 29 times and counting, unfortunately. So, a sweeping revision of the process for releasing accused criminals on bail was finally passed by the Texas legislator on Tuesday, nearly three months after the GOP priority legislation stalled the regular legislative session. Senate Bill 6, which would require people accused of violent crimes to put up cash to get out of jail, cleared the House Monday on an 85-40 to 40 vote, largely along party lines, as always it does. The state had passed the legislation earlier this month on a 27 to 2 vote. The Senate accepted House changes to the legislation Tuesday. The bill now goes to the governor, who is expected to sign it into law. Last week, a House committee removed a controversial provision that would have restricted charitable groups from posting bail for defendants, a practice that gained popularity last summer when groups posted bail to release people arrested while protesting the death of George Floyd, a black man murdered by the white Minneapolis police officer. Oh, I didn't even read the article all the way through before, before reading it here for you guys. I didn't know that they would come to the same conclusion I did. Oh boy, look at that. On Friday, House members added a, re a related provision back into the bill that does not limit the ability of such groups to post the bail. Instead, the amendment would require charitable bail funds to be certified by county officials as nonprofit organizations and file reports on who they bond out of jail. So they're adding bureaucratic red tape. Oy, oy, oy. The original bill that came over from the Senate was essentially going to outlaw the charitable bail process, said State Representative Travis Clarity on his amendment. They said we made it very clear to the other side of the building that this would not stand. Good. That shouldn't have been in the fucking bill in the first place. Senate Bill 6 would change how and if people can be released from jail before their criminal cases are resolved, while they are still legally presumed innocent. Currently, the ability of a defendant to post cash determines most Texas jail releases, but some jurisdictions, particularly in Harris County after losses in federal court, have recently shifted to releasing more people accused of low-level crimes without requiring money. The bill, in part, would limit when people without cash could be released. Still not a big fan of the cash bail system, not gonna lie. I, I don't... Okay, so let me explain let me explain my reasoning. If you are innocent until proven guilty, then the cash bail system exists to do nothing but create profit for jails and prisons and extract that profit from people who are already facing, potentially, going back to jail and losing that money. Money that in many cases is going to be required to keep their families afloat or keep them alive. Most people live paycheck to paycheck, and if they are accosted for any reason, can probably not afford a random-ass bail fund. I just don't see the point in them, personally. I, I really don't. The entire idea that you have to, you have to have capital to function more after getting arrested in mind. If you're innocent until proven guilty, there's no guarantee that that arrest is actually for a charge that's going to stick. Freya, thank you very much for redeeming your points for an... Arara, you fucking monster. You know, I just... I'm, I'm already not a fan of the bail system as it exists. I've already been fucked over by it once in the past. When I had to do the bail thing, do you want to know how long that affected me for? A year and a half. A year and a half to two years was how long I was affected by that. I did not get to pay back my bail, because I had to borrow it from a friend. I did not have enough money to pay that back for two years. Just, that's how long it takes when you're working minimum wage to, to save up that much money. Because you're only able to save it up in like a tenner here and a $15 bill here. And it's, you don't, you don't have enough. You just don't. 
Since some parts of the bill are widely supported, such as requiring judicial training, collecting data, and requiring officials to look at the defendant's criminal history before setting bail. Th that wasn't already part of the process? That's stupid. Civil rights advocates and some Democrats have fought against other significant portions of the legislation, which they argue will lead to or discrimination against poor people and people of color, including the provision on charitable bail. The bail system as it exists already fucks over poor people, so yeah, it's going to discriminate against the poor more in the way that it's currently worded. The bill would ban the release for those accused of violent crimes on personal bonds, which don't require cash, but can include restrictions like GPS ankle monitoring or routine drug testing. Civil rights advocates have argued the exclusion of only cashless bonds will exacerbate wealth-based detention and lead to overfilled jails. Yeah, I can agree with that. Governor Greg Abbott and other Republicans, along with crime victims and their supporters, have pushed for the bail legislation, saying it is needed to keep dangerous people behind bars before their trials. They have pointed to rising crime rates and numerous examples of defendants accused of violent crimes being released on bond and then accused of new crimes. Okay. And again, I can understand that being an issue, but because so many people can get arrested and end up not getting convicted in the end anyway it seems like it's a matter it's it's a matter of measures for me in several of the defend okay uh, in in at least several of the examples noted by bill supporters the defendants were released from jail after paying a bail bond company or giving cash to the court practices that wouldn't be limited under the bill this bill isn't going to prevent all crime. It's not going to prevent individuals from committing crimes if they do make a bond, Huffman said. But it will give trained magistrates and judges all the information they need to use uh, for their judicial discretion to make what we hope will be an appropriate bond decision. Senate Bill 6 opponents have argued the bill would wrongly increase the state's reliance on cash bail, noting that restricting personal bonds primarily penalizes low-income people, limits judicial power, and would boost the for-profit bail bonds industry. Yeah, and that's probably the whole reason the bill's being pushed in the first place. Literally, by making sure that the for-profit bail industry and also the prison complexes themselves can constantly get more money via this, that that is more than likely the reason why this is happening and yeah no it's not going to reduce crime it's it's not going to reduce crime at all i'm sorry it's just fucking not and if this bill passes then please keep an eye on texas's like actual like rate of rate of crime rate of recidivism and see if it goes up or down my prediction is it's going to follow all of the same exact uh, ebbs and flows that it normally does. Taking away ju uh, judicial discretion is not a good thing, said State Representative Ann Johnson. You don't get to unelect the bail bond industry. Multiple federal courts in recent years have found uh, have found bail practices in Texas, two largest counties, unconstitutionally discriminatory against poor people. And civil rights groups involved in those lawsuits sent a letter to officials in all of Texas' 254 counties earlier this month, warning that similar li uh, litigation could follow SB 6's passage. Because personal bonds are the only path to release from jail for people without access to money, Section 6 and 7 of the bill prohibits judges from releasing large categories of people who cannot afford to pay a bail. This infringement on judicial discretion will not make communities safer. It will, however, violate the rights of tens of thousands of people, disproportionately poor black and brown people, every year. So, I agree that that is an issue, and I agree that that is what's going to happen. Here is my very cynical take. That is not a bug of the bill. That appears to me to be a feature. Just think about it for a second. Think. If the bill originally included a section for limiting the ability for charities 
to help in the bailing process, then I would argue that whether that portion of the bill was pig fat or not, that colors the entire, like, the entire intention of the bill going forward. The Republican-driven legislation has been a priority for the governor for years, and he deemed the measure an emergency in the regular legislative session that ended in May. But a similar bill was killed by a deadline and the House Democrats' initial walkout to block the GOP voting bill. After a bot called lawmakers back to again address conservative priorities like voting and bail, Democrats skipped town for weeks shortly after the House and Senate committees voted out both bills. Earlier this month, about halfway through this second special legislative session, enough Democrats were marked present for the legislation to finally progress. And after voting on the bill on Monday, a paired resolution failed to pass the House after an 87-35 to 35 vote. The resolution, would ne uh, which needed approval from two-thirds of the House, or 99 members, would have asked Texas voters in the May election if judges could deny releasing from jail on any type of bail, cash, or personal defendants accused of high-level violent and sexual crimes. And then that is the end of that particular bill. Now, I understand the want to keep people who have committed acts of violence or people who have committed sexual crimes to definitely, you know, keep them behind bars so they do not recommit. I understand the thought process behind stuff like that, and I understand why you would want that. But this does not seem to to, to do that proportionally. Proportionally, this seems like something that's just going to fuck over poor people. And it is, an again, another one of those instances... Where the bill says that it's there to either make crime get punished more, betterer, or it's going to try to prevent more crimes from happening to more people, you know, lower the rate of victims. Again, my prediction is that's not what's going to happen. The, the rates of criminality are going to stay roughly the same. Nothing's really going to change where that's concerned. All that's going to change is how much lobbyists and bail bond companies can line their pockets. That is my cynical take. And I'm sure there's somebody in the chat who's going to go, or at least somebody in the comment section who's going to say uh, that, no, this is a great thing. It's wonderful, including the part about the charities. And, you know, if you're that type of person, I understand what it's like to have a brain hemorrhage. I do. I, I really do. But with that said, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I want to know what your thoughts are on this. It is not the happiest thing in the world, but I don't know. With that said, if you want to support the channel and what I do, you know how to do so. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you want to support what I do, the best ways to do so are in the description below via Patreon or other means. With all that said, as always, everyone, insert end of video tagline here. Don't be a Texan. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. If you want access to behind the scenes content for the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon. I do weekly vlogs over there where I give uh, real life updates to what's going on behind the scenes on the channel, stuff that you don't really get uh, over here and, and even on Twitch. Uh, Patreon also helps the channel's stability a whole lot. Without Patreon, I wouldn't be able to do this at all. Especially with the kind of content that I do, neither YouTube nor Twitch are the most stable sources of income. If you are a $20 and up patron, then you will be featured on the ending slides as shown in the beginning of the end credits. If you want to catch the streams where all this content comes from, then consider heading over to Twitch and following. And if you want to continue watching over here on YouTube, maybe consider clicking one of the end screen videos. And once again, I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me over on my channel. I wouldn't be able to do literally anything that I'm doing over here on YouTube without each and every one of you. So thank you.